A mysterious, unidentified flying object is hurtling straight for Earth. We have static looking video. It's WT1190F, or WTF for short. Most likely, we're told, it's a piece of space junk, and it's expected to re enter our atmosphere on November 13th. How's that for an exact date? CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us on the phone. How worried should we be, Bill? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very good. Yeah, this is kind of interesting, isn't it? It's so interesting, but I, the burning question is, is it going to destroy Earth and everything on it? Any hopes for the human race? <laughs> Uh, well, unfortunately, I have to dash. Uh, I have to dash those expectations. No, this is a a very small object, uh, relatively speaking. It's some kind of rocket body. There's no doubt about that. It seems uh, the orbit carries it about uh, a fair ways uh, past the moon, and then back to Earth again. Is the thinking is that it's some part of a lunar mission? Rather, it dates back 40 years to the old Apollo missions. You know, they left a lot of hardware, third stages, for example, the ascent stage from the lunar module, things like that, uh, were left behind. It could be a rocket body from a recent Chinese mission to the moon. Uh, just don't know. Uh, but this will almost certainly burn up in the atmosphere if anything makes it down to the surface. And they think it's going to hit the ocean, the Indian Ocean, south of Sri Lanka. Uh, it would be very small. So, I mean, the odds of anybody getting hurt are, are very remote. Okay, but you wouldn't be, want to be the fishing boat underneath it when it lands. <laughs> well, I never would. But, you know, the thing that this always brings to mind is, you know, old satellites and rocket bodies enter on a fairly regular basis. And so it's not at all unusual. I mean, the, the good news is that three quarters of the world is ocean. So the, the odds are that it's going to land somewhere in the ocean, and the ocean's a big place. So uh, I think that, you know, statistically, I think uh, there's no point in worrying about this one. But it is interesting. It'd, it'd be interesting to find out exactly what this is, if it is an old rocket body left over from Apollo, or if it's something more recent. Well, and I understand scientists are hoping that they might learn more about you know, ways that they, they can protect the Earth from flying objects hurtling toward the atmosphere? Well, actually, I think there's, there's more of an interest in this one in learning how the thing breaks up. Um, if you think about it, uh, going back to the Columbia disaster back in 2003, that was really eye-opening in terms of, you know, there was a lot of detailed information about how a spacecraft reacts to an uncontrolled entry. And that, of course, has has consequences if a large satellite came in by itself or a rocket crashed. You know, what exactly happens when something comes into the atmosphere at extremely high speed and breaks apart? Where in the altitude does the breakup start? How much debris reaches the surface? That sort of thing. So, you know, I think there's, uh, there's certainly some interest in learning what they can uh, from this body if they can, in fact, you know, track it into the atmosphere and, and see what happens. If they uh, have actually named this thing WTF, then how is it unidentified? <laughs> Isn't that an oxymoron? <laughs> well, uh, Contessa, the way that works is anytime they spot something new, and, and the thing that spotted this, uh, the Catalina survey, is a, is a survey that's looking for near-Earth objects like asteroids that could be on a collision course just to kind of chart things. And anytime you find something new, it gets a catalog number, and that's all this is. It's just a number in a database that says that's what this particular object is. Here's its orbital parameters. Here's where we think it's going, <laughs> that sort of thing. So, so a name is not uh, necessarily an ID in well, this case. Well, I'm not addressing the WTF part. I'm not sure where <laughs> that came from, but uh, it's, it's not at all unusual for these objects to get a catalog name, and they're, they're usually very boring. Okay, let's talk about the asteroid that's coming toward us on Halloween. It's going to be a very close call, I understand. Well, fairly close. I mean, it's out beyond <laughs> the orbit of the moon. <laughs> and I'm not trying to rain on the parade here. It's, uh, it, it, it is always interesting whenever you find these things, not because this poses any threat to Earth, because it doesn't. It's going to pass well beyond us. Uh, but it, it definitely points out, every time we find one of these, that we do orbit in this, in this shooting gallery. Uh, there's objects out there in space that are whizzing around, and, of course, you don't want to get hit by something sizable. And uh, the good news here is they spotted this thing. Uh, so that's, that's a good thing, and it's even better that it's not going to hit the Earth. But it, it certainly highlights once again that uh, this is not a, 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 you know, a placid solar system we live in. There's a lot of dangerous objects swirling around, and NASA's doing their best to try to track down all of them that, that, are, that could pose a threat. 
and then at some point down the road figure out something you could do if you ever did see one coming your way, how you'd divert it or, or, or blow it up or move it off course. Maybe they could find a better use for the nuclear weapons that already exist on Earth. I mean, just a thought. I'm just, I'm not a nuclear scientist, nor am I an astronomer, astronomer but, well, you know. Well, and that's certainly not a bad idea. It's been discussed many times, but the problem with asteroids is some are very dense, and a nuclear could, uh, explosion could perhaps blow it off course, but some are not very dense, and so you always run the threat, the risk depending on the nature of the asteroid, uh, that, you sit, or, uh, you know, that you blow it up and you make a lot of little asteroids that would cause a big problem. Oh. So it's a, it's a very complicated uh, question. I think that the, the best thinking now is if you spot something coming this way is to try to meet it way out in space and divert it versus trying to just blow it up or something because that, that, that can cause way more problems than you're solving. Yeah, I think they call that the hard rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. That's right. Near the atmosphere, um, they do have a risk. The real risk is that uh, something falling through the atmosphere will hit a person on the ground. Since the beginning of the space age, rockets have carried thousands of satellites into orbits around our planet. As a result, we've littered space with spent rocket stages, defunct satellites, fuel tanks, as well as nuts, bolts, and fragments from collisions and explosions with other debris. This abandoned space debris hovers over our planet like a cosmic garbage dump, and some will eventually fall back to the Earth. The question is when and where. 5,400 tons of space junk is already crash-landed on Earth. In 1979, Skylab, the first space station, scattered debris across the Indian Ocean and parts of Australia. In 1997, a DVD-sized piece of smoldering metal fell from the clouds and brushed the shoulder of a woman near Tulsa, Oklahoma. She wasn't injured, but hundreds of miles away, this 570-pound stainless steel tank landed next to a farmer's house in Texas. Both were pieces of debris from the same stage of a Delta II rocket. It's a piece of debris from uh, a launch stage uh, that was in orbit for about nine months and re-entered over the northern part of the United States and Canada, came down and left several fragments of debris around. This was the largest piece. At the Aerospace Corporation in El Segundo, California, scientists study space debris to find out what materials survive re-entry and why and how to minimize future hazards. This is remnants of a stage that put a GPS satellite into orbit. This was found in Saudi Arabia. This one is made out of titanium, which is a very high melting point material, and that's one reason why this one survived so nicely. And this was traveling again on the order of probably 150 miles an hour and it hit the ground. Why do objects fall back to Earth? Most space debris resides in low Earth orbit, approximately 600 miles above our planet's surface. In space, objects can stay for tens to hundreds of years because there's no air resistance. But they will eventually undergo orbital decay. They will lose energy because there's very little atmospheric drag and the Earth's gravity will tug them back down into its atmosphere. Satellites fall back sometimes quickly and sometimes over a long period simply because they begin to touch a little bit of the atmosphere, enough of the atmosphere that there's an increasing force over a long period of time, and that small force acting over a long time will basically drag them out of orbit and they will eventually re-enter. Most debris burns up during atmospheric re-entry and vaporizes. However, some pieces are made of stronger components, such as stainless steel and titanium, which can survive tremendous heat. Once below the dense regions of the atmosphere, they literally free fall to the ground. It'll hit at a very low velocity, say 150 feet per second, or 150 miles an hour, something like that. And so that's the problem. So you're basically slowing something from an orbital speed down to essentially nothing in a relatively short time. 
main engine start. The international space community now imposes new design requirements for most objects, including a propellant system to ensure controlled re-entries over water. Basically, the international community has agreed that an acceptable level of risk for a reentry is around 1 in 10,000. That means that if you did a particular reentry 10,000 times, the likelihood is that you'll hit one person on the planet. And so if you exceed that threshold, the objective is that you should re-enter that piece of hardware into a safe area like the ocean. But new guidelines won't have any effect on the thousands of pieces of old debris already in space. Unfortunately, we have a number of objects in space still which were not designed when that requirement was around, and they still are slowly coming down. So it'll be a while before some of these things take effect. 